The PlayStation 3 had a lot to offer when it was released back in 2006. Given the graphical capabilities, the launch titles, and the fact that it hardly crashed as much as the Xbox 360, the PS3 was considered by many to be the superior console. Despite this, there are still some hidden features that many users were probably unaware of. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer and ring that bell to become a part of our notification squad to stay up to date with all our exciting gaming content. Without further ado, here are 10 things you didn't know your PS3 could do. Region Lock Be Gone have you ever wanted to play some Japan-exclusive games but found your system wouldn't let you due to region lock? Well, the PS3 had you covered. For those who don't know, region locking is a form of digital rights management where the hardware of one region can't play the software of media from another region. This was put in place for games to prevent piracy and to block unsavory content a certain country might not want their citizens to see. The PlayStation 1 and 2 did this, as well as most media from movies to computer software. However, the PlayStation 3 games were not region encoded, so for a lot of gamers who wanted to experience new games from around the world or just bought a game while traveling abroad, you could have played it on your system when you got home. However, this system was not perfect. Blu-ray movies were still region coded, so the system would not play international movies which were region coded. It's also important to note the games are coded region free, but the consoles themselves are not. What exactly does this mean? Well, let's say you bought a game that has DLC and the game you got was a different region than your console. You could run the game just fine, but any DLC you purchase purchase will have to be from that specific region as the multiple regions and consoles would not line up properly. Streaming before streaming it's amazing how Twitch and the concept of streaming has only been around for a couple of years, yet it's already a major game changer for online video gaming content. Streamers have been given a lot of attention recently, from Ninja and Drake recently streaming together to the KSI boxing match, which had over 3 million views. Sony may have tried to corner the market on streaming before there was even a large market to tap into. The PlayStation 3 had a now standard function called DLNA, or Digital Living Network Alliance. With this technology, you could have all of your data, which was stored on a hard drive in the system itself, to be displayed on a TV in another room through a wireless connection. We may think of this as commonplace now, but back in 2006, this was a new and emerging technology for consumer electronics. With a few extra components, one could theoretically stream with the PlayStation 3. All one would need to do was flag which files you want to allow for streaming, and then, using the PS3's navigation, you could remotely access content on your computer or run programs to allow for streaming. Now, Twitch would not be around until 2011, so it's hard to say if a lot of people took advantage of this or not, but one could argue that Sony led a technological innovation. Eye popping or eye sore? So who remembers 3D TVs? They were a huge tech gimmick back in 2010. Large, big screen TVs with 3D glasses, which allowed viewers to experience 3D movies right in their own home. Many companies pushed for this, and while it was an inevitable flop, the PS3 wanted to get in on the action. So one of the later updates in the console's lifespan allowed it to be compatible with 3D movies, since the discs the 3D movies ran on were only slightly different from the standard Blu-ray the PS3 ran. This not only included movies, but also 3D games. The list of 3D-supported games was expansive and included Call of Duty Black Ops 1 and 2, along with Assassin's Creed 3 and Revelations. Now, did 3D gaming really take off after this? Was it successful? Well, seeing how we're not seeing a lot of 3D-supported games, but instead are seeing a lot of VR support, we would say no. If you think about the idea of 3D gaming, it's an idea that really only works on paper and nothing else. When the 3DS was released, people often complained about the headaches they would get from playing more than 30 minutes with the 3D feature on. Whether it was a dud gimmick or not, the PlayStation 3 was the only console to support 3D games and movies. Multi-Window Surfing Surfing the web has never been easier. Well, to be fair, we do live with little computers in our pockets. However, online content was just starting to develop into something worth looking at, and it seemed like every piece of tech to come out in the late 2000s wanted a piece of the action. With the generation of consoles before this, we saw the GameCube tread into the realm of online play, but that was only for a handful of games. The PlayStation 2 made a similar attempt, and while it was marginally better, not many people took advantage of it. The Xbox, however, took full advantage of online gaming with the advent of Xbox. Xbox Live. 
However, all three of the past systems did not take advantage of web browsing. Surfing the web on something other than your home PC came with smartphones and Blackberry phones. Well, it did come on flip phones, but people would go into a cold sweat over the rates and had a mini panic attack just for accidentally opening it. The point is, going online with the PlayStation 3 was much easier, and you could also open multiple tabs and windows, which is something the 360 lacked, you know, when it wasn't red ringing. While this was a neat feature the PS3 had, there wasn't a whole lot to look up online back then. This was the same period where people still bought strategy guides from GameStop. BD Live so some of you might be asking what BD Live is, which is totally normal. Not a lot of people use BD Live. This feature was essentially special access to content on movie studio servers. This was listed as a special feature for some Blu-rays and allowed customers to access special behind the scenes content. Of course, we'll also need to talk about what a Blu-ray disc is and <laughs> of course we're kidding. Come on people, Blu-ray discs are still around and they are amazing. Watch Blade Runner 2049 on an Ultra HD TV. <laughs> Forget about it. But on to BD Live, normally you would need to have your Blu-ray player connected to the internet. From there, you can access BD Live features via the disc's BDJ menu. With the PlayStation 3, you can access this feature because the console read discs with a Blu-ray laser. Given the console's price, even at launch, it was still cheaper than what a Blu-ray player was going for at the time. This was made with the attempt to turn gaming consoles into multimedia platforms, similar to consoles today where you can record, stream, and watch TV all on your device. This feature was just a small step towards a true all-in-one entertainment package. Downloadable Game Saves for the longest time, gamers had to carry around physical objects to hold data for their games. In the early days of gaming, data was stored right on the cartridge, so if you wanted to share a game or show it off, you had to physically take it to your friend's house and play it on their system. Don't even get us started on proving high scores. Long story short, it involved an old Polaroid camera. From there, in our evolution as gamers, we developed memory cards, which saved all the data of our games, so we only needed to bring the card and not the game itself. Then PlayStation 3 came along and changed the game game. Sort of. While the other two systems, the Wii and the Xbox 360, still relied a lot on memory cards, the PlayStation 3 had something slightly different. You could download game saves and have them stored on a jump drive. In addition to saving these on a jump drive, players could even post them online for others to download. Have you already beaten that one really tough level? Why not share and let others see your progress or even play beyond? There are hundreds of PlayStation downloads out there for you to copy and play for yourself on your own PS3. All you need to do is Google them and have a look into other people's games. Video Phone Calls it's weird how, as technology progresses, we can sometimes go so far ahead that we end up regressing and taking a few steps back. Remember Google Glass? On paper, the technology was ahead of its time with an interactive interface on your glasses and all the other features. Where is it now? Oh yeah, dead and buried because the actual glasses looked stupid and no one wanted it. The same thing happened with FaceTime. Sure, you can still FaceTime and chat with your friends and family via video call, but again, it's stupid and no one wanted it, so now it's barely used anymore. Anymore. People would still rather just text with a mixture of words and vague yellow faces. The PlayStation 3 had video calling as well. How many PS3 owners even knew that? Not many, that's for sure. While the console supported video chat, when you're in a game, your attention isn't on anything else but the game. Players will still use voice chat when communicating with each other, just like normal people would rather text and Snapchat than FaceTime. We can even apply this to other failed gaming optics. Do people still play on the Xbox Kinect? Yeah, I didn't think so. Upgradable hard drive. One of the most taxing things on any console is hard drive space. One of the trade-offs for modern gaming is the fact that game data is stored on hard drives in the system as opposed to in the cartridge. So gamers were faced with a dilemma. If we run out of space on our consoles, do we just delete all that hard work just to make new save files? Why bother when you can expand the hard drive space? Like the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3 had an easily removable hard drive. If you're in the marketplace for one, go on a little shopping spree to Amazon or wherever you get your computer components and order a new hard drive today. Well, if you want specifics, most DIY modders agree on 2.5 inch internal SATA drives. This is because the drive has a similar 5,400 RPM to the PS3's standard drive. Now we have to recommend that you look up some tutorials on how to properly switch drives because it's not a simple plug and play process. However, once you're comfortable, you can easily expand your PS3's hard drive to 500 gigs or even a terabyte if you really want to go on a game download binge. There are more options out there for customizations, but for more information, we recommend finding a subreddit or an online forum. Controller Switch 
The controller is perhaps more important to the overall gaming experience than the console. How can that be, you might ask yourself? Well, hold on, bud, we'll explain. Have you ever played GoldenEye 007 on the original N64 controller? The controls are an absolute nightmare. Who made this? Monkeys? Why was this used? Well, what if you emulate the game and use a mouse and keyboard? Boom. Now the game runs smoothly and you can play at 60 FPS. By changing the controller, you change your whole outlook on the game. Now, while switching controllers on the PlayStation might seem like a less gradual move because, well, for the most part, the PlayStation controllers look more or less the same. However, one can't deny the DualShock controllers for the PlayStation 4 are the best ones Sony has ever made. Which is why it blows our mind to know that you can use these DualShock controllers with your PS3. Of course, there isn't a perfect one-to-one -one conversion here. For starters, the touchpad and share button Button would not work on a PS3. Secondly, you can't connect the DualShock wirelessly and will have to keep it tethered to the system. However, the payoff is a much better looking, more comfortable controller that works with both systems to a fair degree. Changing Album Art and Media this last one admittedly is more of a quality of life trick than a game changing one. However, this tip might work for people who like to use their PS3 for music while they play games rather than play through a separate device. For the music lovers out there, how important is keeping that album art? When you're scrolling through your tracks, it can be a real downer to just see the generic blank template for missing album artwork and a mere untitled for the track. You know what the track is? Why can't your phone? When you would put a CD or download an MP3 on your console, it would automatically rip the album art and title tracks in your playlist for you. This was a much better alternative for other systems. Even burning a CD from your iTunes library would often give you a blank space for album art. The PS3 made everything easier in that regard, although it was not 100% perfect, especially with less commercially viable artists. The solution is just as simple. If you want your album art, and for some reason the PS3 didn't rip properly, you can simply download the album art to a jump drive and download it to your PS3. Some people may find this one less than useful, but for those audiophiles who like to keep everything organized and with proper labels, this kind of customization was a godsend. And those were just some hidden PS3 features you may not have known about. Did you know about a feature on this list? Do you have a secret feature you'd like to share? Let us know in the comments section below and subscribe to The Gamer for more exciting gaming content. Thanks for watching.